Hey guys, this is the Wiggle Man, and welcome back to Wiggle's Miniature Workshop. Today we're going to be painting a nautical themed Lord of Contagion in standard Death Guard colours. So starting off we've just used a flat green as a base coat and we're going to do a zenithal highlight through the airbrush with Vallejo game colour Escopina Green. Uh, I'm not very good at Spanish but I'm assuming that translates into Scorpion Green. I chose this colour because I know it's Death Guard. Later on we're going to make this model mucky as hell. So I started off with the Escorpena green because it was either that or livery green. Livery green is a bit too vibrant for my liking but the colour I chose I think is a, a nice kind of mixture of vibrancy but not too in your face. If you're new to the channel or if you're returning please don't forget don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe. I successfully got my one comment we actually had two comments last video shocking brilliant but yeah please do. Next up we're going to use our Liquitex Titanium White Acrylic Ink through the airbrush and we're going to use that to bring basically uh, block out all of the fleshy parts of the model so you can see here there's kind of a part of a tentacle holding onto the, the, the hilt of the axe and there's also one great big tentacle uh, sticking out from the back of his leg as well. I was unsure what colours to use uh, on the tentacles themselves so with the arm tentacle I bit, did a bit of an experimentation so I started off with Vallejo Express colour Dwarven Flesh and kind of shaded the upper arm with the, 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 the flesh tone essentially. And whilst the Dwarven Flesh is still wet, I mixed in some Gloomy Violet, aiming for the tips of the tip of the tentacle, that's quite hard to say, and blending that together with the Dwarven Flesh to create some form of transition. I wasn't overly keen on the uh, final results that I got once it had all dried, but later on we correct that mistake anyway. Traitor Legion or not, there's always going to be some trim painting. So next we are going to use Vallejo metallic colour, metal colour, metal colour, that was it, I keep forgetting it. We're going to be using Vallejo metal colour copper and we're going to start painting in the trim on the model while I decide what I'm doing with the tentacle. And of course for any of the metal parts, the steel parts, we're going to be using acrylic, uh, Vallejo acrylic metal colour gun metal grey and we're going to start blocking those areas in, uh, waiting for the inevitable uh, slopping up of the model. I think one of the reasons I love painting Death Guard and I love painting Nurgle miniatures is that there's no wrong way of painting Nurgle. Any mistake can just be seen as a blemish, a boil. Uh, it's all about kind of just ruining a model in the most artistic way possible. And it's just a really, really fun way to paint Warhammer. One might even say it's very chaotic. <laughs> So 
So to make the seaweed that is covering the model stand out a little bit more, I'm using Vallejo Express Color Lizard Green. You're probably joining me about halfway into painting the actual seaweed itself, but you'll see basically what I'm doing is I'm just using the uh, Vallejo Contrast paint to block out the seaweed colors. Um, that helps to kind of define them, uh, make them stand out and help lead towards this nautical theme of the model. Right, now it's time to play with Cheating in a Bottle 2.0, AK Interactive's Rust Streaks. We are just going to drench this model in here. We are really, really going to slop it up, have some sloppy steaks. What are sloppy steaks? It's a steak with water dumped on it. It's really, really good. Except that we're substituting the water for enamel wash and the steak for a 3D printed miniature. But anyway, enjoy the slopping up of the... Uh, Lord of Dredge. So once the uh, rust streaks has dried just for a little bit, um, you kind of just do it by eye. Uh, for me, I started doing this after about two minutes after application, and some of it is still very, very wet and fresh on the model. I start to go back over it with some Q-tips or cotton wool buds, uh, if you live in the UK, and I begin to essentially just wipe off the excess, uh, and that leaves the uh, enamel wash just in the recesses and it really really just kind of dulls down the tone of the model bring it to more of a from from the bright vibrant uh, scorpion green that we used at the beginning to a much more uh, kind of a, a sickly green that you'd be used to with death guard To highlight the eye lenses, because they're so teeny tiny on this bottle, we're just going to use one layer of Vallejo Game Color Hot Orange. Watch me as I approach this model from different angles and try to get it in the eye lens. So at this stage, if you're just make painting a battle-ready model, you're pretty much there with most of the details uh, on the body, uh, save for the skull and the face and a couple of other odd objects, the tentacle, which I still hadn't made my mind up as to what I was doing with it. Um, but we're going to take it a little bit further and take our scorpion green, thin it down with a two-to-one glaze, so two parts glaze, one part scorpion green, and we're then going to go around the model and do a bit of edge highlighting. I hate edge highlighting. It is the bane of my existence. It just requires far too much patience for what I feel doesn't have a huge particular effect. However, on miniatures at 28mm scale, like Warhammer is, what I tend to do with edge highlighting is try to just hit raised surfaces, so surfaces where light pointing directly down at the model is going to hit the edges of uh, basically colours. And that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to apply a couple of edge highlights around the model, not over the whole model, uh, just to help it pop that little bit more. So if you've watched my last couple of videos, you will know that Muted Pink is one of my favorite acrylic inks. It's very thin, it's very vibrant, and it's really, really, really good for getting a magenta. That's what I decided I was going to paint the tentacle because I feel like the magenta contrasts very well with the green of the Death Guard art. Get Death Guards, excuse me, the Death Guard armor. So we're going to apply that in several very, very thin layers uh, because I'm painting at a very low PSI so I don't bleed too much onto the paint job of the armor 
but also still giving a little bit of a transition between the two colours. The observant among you may have noticed that his axe isn't there. I dropped it by accident and the axe snapped off. But I glued it back on later. It was quite a clean snap. I then used some very, very thin down uh, Vallejo game color Warlord Purple and started highlighting everywhere that I painted uh, on the tentacles with the Warlord Purple with my airbrush whilst avoiding the armor. I feel like my confidence with the airbrush has grown a lot over time, so I can now start using it more on intricate parts of the model. Again, there's still a bit of overlap, there's still a bit of overspray, but because of the the essence uh, of the Death Guard, it helps with the transition. It makes things look dirty and grimy on the armor anyway. And then we do a final highlight with Vallejo game color. I'm not sure what pink it is. It's the pink color, what they do. And this is exclusively on the leg tentacle. While rust streaks is a really, really good way of adding detail and depth and grime to a model, I wasn't overly impressed with how it interacted with the uh, copper that we placed down earlier. So I went with Cheating in a Bottle 1.0, slapped on some Agrax Earthshade all around the copper trim on the armor. Next, we're using another one of my favorite colors, and this is Vallejo Game Color Bone White. We're going to use that to base coat the skull on the, uh, the little shield, pauldron, pauldron shield, and we're also going to use it to base coat the skull on the top of the spike and the uh, dead bloated head on the top of the spike. Back to Agrax Earthshade, we're going to use that to shade the skull on the pauldron and the skull on the top of the spike. I'm also drawing in a couple of little um, dribble lines down the skull on the pauldron just to add to that effect of uh, grizzly grow stuff. Sorry about the focus here by the way guys, it's really hard painting miniatures with a camera over your head and trying to stay in the right spot. For the bloated head, again carrying on with the out of focus theme, I'm going to be using uh, Shaiish Purple uh, contrast paint, not the Vallejo Express colour that I used earlier, and that's because Shaiish Purple's always stood to me as a very, very good purple contrast paint. I'm going to use that to block out the uh, the kind of the bloatedness of the head when it's in focus, when you can see it. Oh, there we go, we're focused again. So, with the Shaiish purple dried out, I am now going to use Vallejo Game Color Cold Grey to base in the color of the hair. Wasn't quite sure what color to paint the hair of a man who has essentially been drowned, decapitated, and put on a pike. Uh, but you'll also notice that I've started to base coat some of the barnacles around the model. For that, I just used Vallejo Game Color Bone White for the barnacling because I thought barnacles were going to be bright, colourful things. No, it turns out they are just uh, little creatures made of bone. You'll also see here that I am going to highlight the two skulls and the face with the same colour. It is once again using Vallejo Game Colours Bone White. This time it's very thin down uh, with two parts glaze to one part bone white. And you'll really, really see here 
kind of the difference of just how some shading underneath the model will make it appear. Again, I'm using the same colour for both of these and they both look, between the head and the skull, they look very, very different. Now we're going to continue painting in all of the barnacles around the armour. I wanted to add another colour, bit of colour to the armour as well. So, of course, we've got copper that's exposed to the air. It's verdigray time. Uh, I am using Vallejo model colours verdigray, uh, I think it's verdigray, uh, glaze tone. And I'm just basically, how I was targeting it was anywhere where there's battle damage on the copper, that's where I'm going to put a bit of verdigray. So if there's a chip in the armor, if there's a hole in the armor, that's where I'm going to put the verdigray tone. Uh, my thought process here was that I'd assume that a ter Space Marine in Terminator armor would have some kind of coating over the top. And as it gets chipped and damaged, that's when the copper underneath is exposed to the air. That was my thought. I tried to be sciencey. There's some kind of science involved in there anyway. But yeah, enjoy the verdigray. Coming up to the end of the video soon and it's nearly time for the big reveal so if you've made it this far please like comment and subscribe it would mean the world to me it really does make my day um, but yeah we're going to do one more edge highlight this time i'm only using a one-to-one -one, in fact i think it was two to one uh, glaze mix but this time it's two parts scorpion green one part glaze uh, just to make it stand out a little bit more we're going to go back over some of the edge highlighting just to punch it back up a little bit and I did do some extra details off camera. Uh, I painted the base off camera, which is actually quite, I'm very pleased with how it came out. Uh, and it's a great part of the model uh, because the base is included with the uh, 3D print files, as well as uh, doing some more work on the ax head. It was just some simple highlighting of the metallics with brighter metallics. Not my best work, if I'm honest with you, however, I think the rest of the model looks absolutely brilliant. And I hope you do too. Um, I'm very proud of it. But yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed the video. We'll have the reveal soon. But bye for now. By the way, if you are having problems edge highlighting models, then I definitely recommend using glaze medium mixed in with your edge highlighting colour because it goes on so smoothly. Look at this. Oh, it's great. It smiled at me. I'm not a piece of shit.